I'm Jenna Hastings. I'm a computer scientist and bioinformatician by training. And until about a year ago, I was coordinator of the KEBI project um, at the EBI in, in Cambridge in the UK. KEBI is a chemical ontology. It's a large chemical ontology. At the moment, it has around 50,000 classes. Uh, that's been growing steadily over more than 10 years since it was first uh, created. And um, KEBI is a member of the Ober Foundry, so it's, it's alongside the gene ontology and other relevant biological uh, academic ontologies in the Ober Foundry. I first heard of BFO in the context of an Ober Foundry meeting, I think, probably back in 2008 or somewhere around there. And at that time, KEBI was getting a lot of criticism because it was difficult to use for a lot of purposes, uh, especially it was very difficult to use for any kind of automated reasoning because the classification hierarchy was confused and uh, the relationships that were used in the ontology were idiosyncratic and not, not well defined. And in order to remedy this, um, we got funding from the British Biology Research Council to align KEBI with BFO, so to bring KEBI under the sort of shared umbrella upper level ontology together with the rest of the Ober Foundry resources and to um, align the relationships with the relation ontology. And this was a successful project, so I think it ran probably 2009 through 2011 or thereabouts, and we cleaned up the classification hierarchy, made KEBI a lot um, easier for people to use for various purposes just by thinking clearly about what sort of things were included in the ontology and how those things related to uh, the more general classes in BFO. And um, yeah, so something I, I should say is that when people domain specific ontologies, they don't want to think about general upper level ontologies, but you always find that they have got an implicit one sort of built into how they think about the things they put into the ontology. And it's really helpful to bring that implicit uh, upper level ontology out and make it explicit. It's, it's always helpful. You always get a better product at the end. And um, another thing I would say is that of all the upper level ontologies, and there are a few other candidates used, I mean, it's, there's a different one that people tend to use in Japan and another one. Anyway, of all the different upper level ontologies that I've ever seen, BFO is definitely the easiest to use for, you know, domain specific people. It's got much more by way of documentation to sort of help people who are not, you know, lifelong committed ontologists to kind of get their head around these general ideas in, in categorization. So yeah, so um, after cleaning KEBI up and defining the relationships and aligning the um, classification hierarchy with BFO, um, we were then, we went on to be used kind of for lots of different purposes that we couldn't be used for before that. And uh, yeah, I would say it was, it was definitely a very helpful exercise.